I don't know what happened. I'll say the words and let them paint the picture for you to experience what I did. I'll set the scene. I'm an avid urban explorer and I always have been. I love nothing more than going to old abandoned buildings and seeing what I can find, but every so often you'll get far more than you're looking for. And luck would have it that one day it was going to be my turn too. Now I had a couple of friends of mine. I'm not going to say their names or my own, but I'll just call them Ben and Ryan. Now we would love going to these strange places that nobody seemed to really know about. And one day, Ryan suggested a place that was really out in the middle of nowhere and that apparently he'd only seen once before. It was an old house that apparently had quite a large basement area in it. This place had been abandoned for a long, long time and I couldn't wait to get there and explore. Now the problem was actually finding the place. Now we had to drive for a good four or so hours to actually reach roughly where it should have been and we were truly driving out into the middle of nowhere to get here. Now the drive was beautiful. It was a lovely warm summer's day and the heat really made you feel comfortable. We're having a really good time making some jokes with each other and having a laugh generally. We ended up pulling up to basically exactly where the support is supposed to be and there's nothing there. A little confused, Ryan offers to walk off ahead of us to find the place. I sit on the trunk of the car with Ben and it's pleasantly warm in the summer heat. Now we truly are out in the sticks here with not much around us and not many sounds, just the odd crickets and maybe water bugs or whatever else is out here. We actually have to be careful of different scorpions and other animals like that. Eventually we can hear, hey, come over here, you guys have got to check this out. Excitedly, me and Ben jump up and go and see what Ryan's making fuss about. And there it is. Just off in the horizon is an old building. This thing was really big. Like, not a mansion, but just under the size of it. And it looks beautiful. If I had to guess, I would say this thing sat abandoned pretty much since the day that somebody first went in there. Now, I have this pretty nice feeling that's almost inviting and it's something I can't really describe. It's almost like something was drawing me in there. The other two seem a little more hesitant than me to go in, but I'm really excited now. And we start making our way over there. While walking, I'm struck with how happy I feel. It's almost like a high that I can't describe. Almost like I was coming to something that I was truly belonging to. I look over to my two friends and they don't seem as excited as me, just more focused on getting there and somewhat hesitant. I laugh and say, hey, come on guys, it's going to be fine, there's literally nothing to worry about, come on, this is going to be great. Now, as always, we never go through the front door, just in case there's anybody living there that's not supposed to be, or any kind of animals that are looking for food, so we decide to go around the back. This place has a beautiful porch and it's just really pretty. We realise that there's a window that we can prop open to enter, and I opt to go first. I slowly pry the window open and manage to pop it up. While opening the window, I actually get a splinter in my hand, but strangely I can't feel it at all. It's quite a big and nasty one too, and I head in. I then turn around to help my two friends get in too. I turn and say, come on, get in and Ben's quite hesitant about going in, saying, I don't know why, I have a really bad feeling about this. I say, come on, stop being stupid, it's gonna be great. We drove out here all this way, and he reluctantly follows in, and so does Ryan. Now all three of us are here. Now the building smells old, but as I turn around, I'm suddenly struck by how nice this place is. It's basically a timed capsule, and it almost feels odd. I feel weirdly welcome and like I'm at home now, and we slowly make our way through the first room, 
out to the kitchen. Now there's no food of course, but honestly, if we open the fridge and see some it wouldn't surprise me. My two other friends have started to warm into it now, and they're starting to enjoy the experience too. We decide that we're going to first explore the upstairs parts of the house, and then we're going to explore the ground level. We now come into a massive main hall or living area, which still has a chair there that looks like it's never been used before, and a really old clock. For some reason I keep being drawn towards the clock and I'm not sure why this is. Of course it's sitting timeless but it kind of emphasises the feel of the whole situation. It really feels like we've stepped back in time at this point and I just really feel welcome here and I don't know why. We decide that we're going to attack the upstairs and we all go up there with me leading the way. I take a couple of steps onto the stairs and I almost feel like I know my way round. It's really bizarre, but I seem to kind of know the layout in my head naturally. We get to the very top and I first go into the bathroom. I look out of the window and it's really a beautiful summer's day, and the other two split off exploring some old bedrooms and things. I go to turn on the tap and there's no water whatsoever. I try and run the bath but again there's nothing. I turn around and head over to my friends who are in the other rooms. They're inside the main bedroom now and they're sitting on the bed. I lay on the bed and it's extremely comfortable. My friends say let's explore the other rooms and I say I'll catch up with you in a minute. I lay back and for some reason I can't seem to help but smile. I feel really at peace now and for some reason, something's drawing me into the lower level of the house. Now, I tell my friends that I'm going to go and investigate further and they say okay, and I start heading down the stairs. I feel very happy and kind of glide down, almost like I'm in a dream. Now, it's really bizarre, it really is like stepping into a museum or time capsule. Everything's just perfect, almost too perfect. I make my way into another room next to the kitchen and I realise that there's a large picture frame here and a cabinet. I almost feel drawn to this spot and I don't know why. I go to move the picture frame in case there's something else next to it like a picture that's fell off and I realise that it starts to fall down. I quickly steady myself bracing to catch it and then I realise it's a door. I can slowly pull it open and it silently releases, and there's a stairway behind it. I'm looking into the darkness when I realise that there's a light switch next to me. I flick it and to my surprise, the lights come on, and I can see a little further down. The staircase winds down, and I slowly close the picture behind me on its hinges and close the door. I'm not sure why that I didn't tell my friends where I was going, but I decide that I have to press on and explore further. I make my way down the stairs and turn, and I'm suddenly met with a couple of doors in a large room. I can't believe how big this place is. I don't know what door to go to, but I seem almost drawn to one. It's the one directly ahead of me. I open it, and I'm met by the light from the switch I've just turned on. There's just a single light hanging from the ceiling there, and more rooms. I think this is odd, and think maybe they didn't finish furnishing down here, or maybe it was some kind of bunker I don't know what, but it's kind of weird. There's no furniture whatsoever here, and again, I'm drawn to keep going forward. I don't know what was in those other rooms to my left and right, but I open the door ahead of me and I'm met with a very long corridor. It's almost impossibly long, and there's a light leading down to the end, but I can't really see what's down there. Maybe this was some kind of escape hatch or something, just in case there was an emergency, and it probably comes out somewhere else and I think this is really cool and decide that I need to investigate it and this feeling. I can't describe this feeling of being completely drawn into somewhere, almost like it was calling me to go further. 
I decide that before I go on, I should see what else there is, and I close this door. I then turn around and open another one to my left, and it's the same again. An empty room with four doors which is actually very confusing to me. I continue ahead and I start to feel quite lightheaded. I think maybe the air's not so good down here and I turn around and come out the one I've just went to but there's nothing but more doors in here. Starting to panic now, I'm not sure exactly where I am and I call out for my friend's name but there's no reply. I do it again and I'm met with silence. I can now hear a scratching on the side of one of the doors that I've just come from. I hesitantly open it thinking it's them and I'm met with that corridor once more. I feel absolutely drawn in this moment to go further down and I hear a door close behind me. I turn around and for some reason I'm at peace once again and I feel like I just have to go on further. I'm completely disorientated at this point and I don't really know how to get back and I think my way out might be up ahead of me. I decide that I shouldn't go on without my friends and I stare down into that corridor, almost in a trance. I don't know what I was looking for or looking at, but there was something there and it feels like everything around me goes black and all I can see is the end of that tunnel and another door. I have to know what's in it and I have to investigate it, but maybe just maybe I should get the others. I turn around now and come back in again. I go straight and straight but become completely disorientated as I close the second door behind me and there's just more doors. I go to open the one to my left and I realise that it doesn't open. There's another one behind me and it's the same again. Now I think my panic might have set in finally and I feel my heart beat through my hands. My hands are now shaking as I open another door and it's the same again. But this time, I know that it's going to lead me to the corridor because I can see the light coming down it and now I'm really confused. I call out once again for my friends and I'm met with silence and I swear every so often I can hear some kind of footsteps behind me and that's when everything went black. The next thing I know, I'm being moved but can't see anything and I'm being slapped with water poured over my head. I'm very disorientated and confused about what's happening until then I realise it's one of my friends calling out my name saying you've got to drink this water and I suddenly come through. I go to wipe my face and I realise that I'm absolutely drenched in a cold sweat and they say, thank god, we thought we were going to lose you for a second. I can then see the car just up ahead and I feel very weak, almost like I can't move. I keep on seeing black sparks everywhere where I'm not with it. They hold the water to my mouth and say, you've got a drink. And I nod and start drinking water like I've never drank before. I say what happened and they said, we couldn't find you for hours. We were looking for you and getting really worried. Then we realised that the picture was off the frame and investigated it and found the way down that you went. We found you in the very bottom of the stairs, covered in sweat, with some big marks across your arm and on your back. I say what marks? My friend then lifts up my shirt and points and there's very large scratch marks on my back and on the backs of my arms. I can't believe it, I say how does this happen? What happened to me? And they say, we don't know. I told them I was screaming out for you guys, but you didn't reply. My friends then look at each other and say, we didn't hear a thing. We just thought you fell over and got hurt. And now the three of us lock eyes. Without saying anything, my friend quickly gets onto the ignition and floors it and we slowly speed out of there. As we quickly drive away, I then explain to my friends what happened as I'm more with it now and then they give their story and look very scared. They say that I disappeared for literally hours without making a sound 
and they kept calling out for me but couldn't hear anything, just some kind of laughter coming from somewhere else that they thought was me. I said laughing, no, I wasn't laughing whatsoever, and my friend Ben goes very pale suddenly. He then says, let's never go back to this place again, I don't know if we're alone in there, and we drive off, making the rest of the trip back until eventually stopping to get some food after three or so hours and more water. I pretty much felt fine again after this and we put it down to me being extremely dehydrated, but we can't make sense of what happened. It doesn't make sense how I got lost, so lost down there. We agreed that something was completely wrong and that we vowed never to go back there again to explore it. Now I don't know whether this house was designed like the Winchester Mystery House and some crazy person made it really confusing, but I don't understand what happened. I don't understand how I got so lost with such a simple thing to do or why I felt so drawn down there and I'm sure something was down there with me. One of my friends later on decided to go back with some of his other friends just to confirm that the place was actually there, but they could never find it. The scariest part for me is not knowing what happened to me, or how I got all of them scratches on my back, or what was at the end of that tunnel.